Our protagonist, the Story Bank of America, raises a red flag, warning of an impending bank catastrophe. You might wonder what could spell such dire straits for the U.S. banking system. Cast your memory back to the global financial crisis and the specter of toxic assets that nearly crushed both American and global finance. Well, brace yourself, for these toxic assets have resurfaced larger and more menacing than ever before. The heart of the storm lies in the realm of commercial real estate. Bank of America's CEO Brian Moynihan solemnly predicts a slow burn, a crisis gradually escalating until it erupts into a full-blown inferno. Historically, commercial real estate has been a bastion of stability with prices either rising or holding firm. However, the landscape has shifted. Office spaces lay empty as the workforce embraces remote work, a scenario unprecedented in modern times. Yet, the true peril lies in the toxic assets festering within the banking system. These ticking time bombs threaten to explode with consequences far-reaching and catastrophic. The conventional wisdom of swift asset turnover no longer holds any water. The banking industry finds itself mired in unrealized losses exacerbated by rising interest rates and a volatile market. As the economy teethers on the edge, the specter of default looms over commercial real estate loans. Despite hopes of a soft landing, signs point to a worsening crisis. New York Community Bank's recent brush with insolvency serves as a stark reminder of the deepening fissures within the banking system. Amidst this turmoil, Bank of America's clients grapple with dwindling rental revenues and vanishing equity. The pandemic's aftermath has laid bare the fragility of the financial system with risky loans bundled into toxic assets and offloaded onto unsuspecting investors. This isn't merely a rerun of the global financial crisis, it's a sequel with higher stakes. Brian Moynihan's optimism clashes with the grim reality unfolding before our eyes. The Federal Reserve's attempts to manipulate interest rates only exacerbate the crisis, stifling lending and tightening financial conditions. As the yield curve inverts and financial markets convulse, banks find themselves paralyzed, unable to navigate the treacherous waters of the crisis. In this tumultuous landscape, the fate of the banking industry hangs in the balance with no easy path forward in sight. This situation is profoundly alarming as it echoes a familiar pattern observed prior to economic recessions. Each downturn is marked by a deceleration and subsequent contraction in lending. Commercial banks and their capacity to create and destroy money through lending and repayment play a pivotal role in the circle. A net contraction in lending signals a dangerous scenario, indicating a heightened risk of default and delinquency, ultimately leading to a full-blown financial crisis. Wall Street, ever adept at exploiting market dynamics, is once again at the center of the storm. Real estate woes, previously confined to obscure investment products, now threaten to unravel the financial system. These collateralized loan obligations, reminiscent of the mortgage crisis, package risky debts into bonds of varying risk levels, deceiving investors with the allure of high returns and AAA ratings. As history repeats itself, the parallels into the mortgage crisis are unmistakable. Once again, the Wall Street's insatiable appetite for profit has led to the creation of complex financial instruments, concealing the true risks lurking within. The unraveling has already begun, with troubled assets skyrocketing within these niche products, leaving major players scrambling for collateral to cover their losses. In this high-stakes game of financial brickmanship, the resilience of the banking system, once touted by regulators, is called into question. The nightmare scenario unfolds before our eyes, revealing the fragility of a system propped up by the risky bets and deceptive practices. As the specter of a financial crisis looms large, one can't help but wonder what are the regulators doing while the house of cards teeters on the brink of collapse. In the face of this mounting crisis, investors are left grappling with uncertainty as the true extent of the damage remains shrouded in opacity. The future of the banking industry hangs in the balance as the fallout from this latest debacle threatens to reverberate across global markets. Only time will tell whether lessons have been learned from past mistakes or if history is doomed to repeat itself in an endless cycle of boom and bust. What we're witnessing is far from the anticipated scenario of a soft landing. 
As delinquency rates continue to climb, it's evident that the Federal Reserve's maneuvers with yield and money curves are exacerbating the crisis. When the yield curve inverts, as observed in the 10-year, 2-year comparison, it's the market's way of signaling a fundamental misunderstanding. These inversions trigger a cascading effect, driving delinquency rates ever higher regardless of subsequent rate cuts. The challenge lies in the lag within the system. By the time the Fed reacts, it's often too late. Banks, wary of lending amidst economic uncertainty, exacerbate the problem. This dynamic is compounded by short-term floating rate loans particularly prevalent in commercial real estate projects undergoing renovations or expansions. These loans, secured during the pandemic when rates were near zero, now burden borrowers with unsustainable payments. As the interest rates rise, the resale value of refurbished properties plummets, leaving borrowers and banks alike in precarious positions. Collateralized loan obligations, or CLOs, designed to offload risky debt, are now absorbing losses, further weakening the banking system. The inevitable defaults within the CLO market serve as a harbinger of the broader crisis looming on the horizon. The Federal Reserve's proposed solution of reducing rates to zero is merely a band-aid for a much deeper wound. Lower rates alone cannot rectify the fundamental issue of a lack of demand and reluctant lenders. In fact, as rates fall and the yield curve steepens, banks tighten lending standards even further, exacerbating the crisis. The parallels to the lead-up to the global financial crisis are unmistakable. Once again, Wall Street's assurances of ample protection for high-rated debt within CLOs echo the hubris of the past. However, history has shown us that these assurances offer little solace when the storm finally hits. In the face of mounting risks and impending defaults, the banking system finds itself teetering on the brink with no easy path to salvation in sight. The bottom of the capital stack paints a different picture altogether. These structures are already unraveling with CLO issuers resorting to purchasing delinquent loans using cash reserves. However, this merely transfers risks back onto their balance sheets, setting the stage for potential bailouts. Such maneuvers allow issuers to sidestep asset coverage tests, jeopardizing the cash flow streams of certain investors. This precarious situation underscores the fragility of these products and the looming specter of systemic failure. The deleterious effects are already evident, with the share of delinquent loans and CLOs fluctuating alarmingly. While some temporary relief has been observed, as issuers pull back on the riskiest portions of these products, it's merely a band-aid on a gaping wound. The stress within the CLO market is palpable, with issuers grappling with the daunting task of staving off defaults. The surge in CLO issuance during the pandemic, fueled by low interest rates and heightened demand from real estate investors, has exacerbated the problem. The strategy of fixing and flipping properties buoyed by low rates and pandemic-induced housing trends has backfired for many, leaving them teetering on the edge of insolvency. As unemployment rises and economic conditions worsen, the ripple effects are felt across the commercial real estate market. Multifamily properties, overbuilt and underoccupied, face mounting challenges. Office spaces, once bustling hubs of activity, now sit vacant, adding to the mounting losses. The downgrade of CLO bonds and the increasing number of loans transferred to workout specialists paint a bleak picture of the future. Even short sellers are betting against these products, predicting massive losses that could wipe out trust equity. While the fund's potential rate cuts may offer some respite, they're unlikely to address the underlying structural issues plaguing the market. Amidst mounting risks and uncertainties, the Fed's reluctance to intervene speaks volumes. With inflation rearing its head and the specter of a hard landing looming large, the nightmare scenario for banks and financial markets appears all too real. As the world grapples with economic turmoil on multiple fronts, the risks of a full-blown financial crisis loom larger than ever. In conclusion, the intricate web of risks entangling the CLO market paints a dire picture of potential systemic upheaval. As economic pressures mount and financial markets teeter on the edge, the need for vigilance and preparedness has never been more critical. If you found this analysis insightful and informative, don't forget to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and turning on notifications to stay updated with our latest content. 
Your engagement helps us continue to bring you valuable insights and perspectives on today's most pressing issues. And for those who wish to go above and beyond in supporting our channel, consider sending us super thanks. Your generosity enables us to delve deeper into complex topics and deliver high-quality content that educates and empowers our audience. Thanks a lot for being a part of our community, and we look forward to seeing you again in the next video.